Happy Friday, everyone. We made it to the first weekend of 2023. I'm actually still accidentally writing 2022 on everything, but that's okay. I'm Stella Chung, and in today's Daily Fix, we have massive potential changes coming to Dungeons & Dragons content creation, CD Projekt Red is paying another lawsuit settlement, and Resident Evil 4 remake details on how they're not cutting any content and, in fact, making one section bigger. Thanks for spending your Friday with us. Here's the news. There have been a lot of changes revolving around Wizards of the Coast, and the most controversial upcoming change is their adjustments to their open game license, or OGL. The OGL is a public copyright license that allows for the creation of third-party products using D&D mechanics. The OGL also had a route that let products avoid paying the licensing fees, but now that may be changing. Wizards of the Coast haven't released the full terms of the revised OGL, but D&D Beyond, the partnered website, revealed a breakdown of the potential shift. Titled OGL 1.1, the new terms would be a modification of the system that would allow backwards compatibility with the D&D 5e books to the new 1D&D ruleset that will be the future of D&D. This includes changes to character creation, combat rules, spells, and the way classes work. However, the future of D&D isn't all that positive with OGL 1.1, stating that the previous terms are no longer an authorized license agreement. With this new overhaul, a lot of licensed publishers will have to completely overhaul their products to align with the new rules. This includes publishers like Paizo, Cobalt Press, and Green Ronin to update their businesses quickly. Additionally, creators earning more than $50,000 a year will have to report the revenue to Wizards of the Coast, and anyone making over $750,000 in a year will have to pay a royalty in 2024. This will most likely directly affect Cobalt Press and Critical Role's publishing company, Darrington Press. Just in case you're not familiar with D&D campaigns, Critical Role is one of the most popular D&D shows founded by renowned voice actors Matt Mercer, Ashley Johnson, Marisha Ray, Taliesin Jaffe, Travis Willingham, Sam Regal, Laura Bailey, and Liam O'Brien. Their most popular campaign that was homebrew, or custom created, Fox Machina took off, and there's now an Amazon Prime animated show that was born of that story. Luckily, creators with homebrew campaigns will most likely not be affected, but there are a ton of hurdles to jump through in reading all the new terms. The biggest line of concern regarding the document is that any content created under the updated OGL, whether or not it is owned by the creators, Wizards will have, quote, non-exclusive, perpetual, irrevocable, worldwide, sub-licensable, royalty-free license to use that content for any purpose. This document revealed isn't set in stone, there are most likely going to be revisions for OGL 1.1, but there is a ton of backlash rising up since the community is the reason D&D was brought back from failure, especially with the recent popularity of live play D&D livestreams on Twitch and YouTube. Critical Role's own homebrew campaign brought the role-playing game to life and rekindled interest in the game, so this honestly feels like a slap to the face to the community. Since this rendition of OGL 1.1 isn't final, we'll be keeping an eye out for updates and, hopefully, Wizards of the Coast to listen to the feedback. CD Projekt Red settled the lawsuit filed against them by investors in 2020. As reported by GameSpot, the settlement will see CD Projekt Red pay investors who bought stock between January 16, 2020 to December 17, 2020 settlement, administration costs, taxes, attorney's fees, and more for $1.85 million. The class action lawsuit was filed in 2020 claiming that CD Projekt Red hit the state of Cyberpunk 2077 from investors after the game launched with several bugs that made the game unplayable for a lot of players, specifically on console. Multiple lawsuits were filed against CD Projekt Red after the launch and one was actually settled in December 2021 for the same $1.85 million figure. Luckily, with all of these lawsuits getting settled, Cyberpunk 2077 is only improving over time. There have been huge updates to help with various bug fixes, a next-gen update, and new PC update, and even a free DLC patch added to the game. There's also a new expansion, Phantom Liberty, set to launch later this year, so it's kind of a good time to jump into Cyberpunk. Resident Evil 4 Remake is well on its way, but fans are worried that Resident Evil 4 would take the same approach that the remake for Resident Evil 3 would take, where things were radically changed from the original game. But if you're not horror fans, the development team for RE4 have confirmed that the three main sections of the game, made up by the village, castle, and island, will remain in the game. In a recent issue of Edge magazine, the team confirmed that the island section, the final section of the game, will be in the remake even though it was a bit divisive over the years. Apparently, the island will also have, quote, a lot more to it than the original game. 
They didn't provide any more details about that, but I'm really curious to see how that'll be translated to the remake. Are you a part of any D&D campaigns? Or do you have a favorite one to watch? And have you tried out Cyberpunk 2077 since all the updates? Let us know. I'm Stella Chung, and now that you're all caught up on the news, check out our episode of Next Gen Console Watch on all our Xbox, PlayStation, and Nintendo predictions for 2023. And of course, download the IGN app, subscribe to The Daily Fix on Snapchat, and for all things gaming, keep it right here at IGN.